Come along with me if you've ever wanted to build a deck with amazing synergy. We're building a deck around Durnan of the Yawning Portal. Whenever he attacks, you look at the top four cards of your library. You may exile a creature card from among them, the rest on the bottom of your library. You may cast these spells, and they have Undaunted. That means with three opponents, we're going to reduce the cost of these creatures by three. I'm envisioning a world where we're paying one or two colored mana for these cards. That's it. So we might as well get a payoff from that as well and choose a background. It turns out Durnan had a passion for archaeology at Baldur's Gate Tech. So now, as a commander, he has, whenever you cast a spell from exile, this creature deals damage equal to the spell's mana cost to target opponent. So we got big synergy here. We're going to exile some creatures. We're going to cast them for cheaper. We're going to do damage as they come into play. And everyone's going to wonder why the game ends so quickly with you on top. So first off, we can start off with an awesome dragon. Bonehorde Dracusaur has a 5-5 five, five for 5. But you'll notice it's three colorless mana. So when we cast this thing from exile with Durnan, it's going to be red-red, make a flying first strike that exiles more cards, and we're going to deal 5 damage to target opponent. Beautiful. Let's get more value from our exiled creatures and play Wild Magic Sorcerer. You'll also notice three colorless mana. So from exile, this guy costs one red mana. For a 4-3, that's going to provide an awesome engine. Plarg and Nasari fit the same kind of idea here. Lots of extra spells, spells from exile. They're going to cost red red. We also get to play Wolfgar of Icewind Dale. Double triggers when you attack with Durnan. That seems good. And we're going to play Roaming Throne, a brand new card. And you might be thinking, well, we don't really have a creature type to name. Name human. Durnan's ability triggering twice every time he attacks sounds amazing. We're also going to add Bard class to this deck. When you get this thing to level two, you have the potential to be casting spells from for free from exile and dealing extra damage. One more brand new card because Discover isn't busted at all. Chamil, the Inner Sun. Spells you control can't be countered, and at the beginning of your end step, discover five. We're going to have a lot of five drops in this deck. Just free value. Okay, so we're talking creatures from exile. Great. We're talking Durnan triggers. Great. That means we should be playing combat steps. Extra combat steps. So that's the other synergy in the deck. Cheap creatures from exile, extra combat steps. That means everyone's favorite, Carlash, Fury of Avernus is also in the deck. We're going to play Relentless Assault. We're going to play Seize the Day. It has flashback. And you can pick any other extra combat step triggers you want. You might even be able to finish the game off with like a Final Fortune, which is an extra turn, but that also means an extra combat step. And a couple more bonus uh, pieces for us for value. We've got Goreclaw, Terror of Calcisma, further reducing this cost of our spells that we cast. And we got lots of five drops in the deck for sure, so up the beanstalk is a no-brainer here. It's probably getting banned anyways in modern, so no more five or six dollar copies. You're gonna be able to get this for a buck or less. So there we go. Durnan, the yawning portal, as a passionate archaeologist, thrown around burn spells that are also creatures with extra combat steps. Hope this helps. Do you want to know the key to building an effective commander deck? It's starting with an effective commander, and there's a few different ways to do that. We've got one of those here today. Board control. Asmoranamar, Dakai, Destine, Akoldakar. Yeah, I said it once, and it's Asmo for the rest of the video. So this human wizard is black-red, which is great. We'll be able to use the graveyard. But most importantly, it makes food tokens, and it abuses food tokens. Having creatures deal damage to themselves means you're going to be able to keep the board clear for whatever you want to do. Take out that Spirit of the Labyrinth. Take out that Eidolon of Rhetoric. No Thalia, Guardian of Thraben, is sticking around with this deck on the board. That's what effective commanders do. So let's take a look at what this deck does. First of all, Asmo goes and gets the Underworld Cookbook, where you can discard cards to make food tokens. Sweet. The best card to pair with that is Oval Chase Daredevil. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, return it from your graveyard to your hand. So that means you get to discard it, make a food, bring it back to your hand every turn. Soon to be released, Nuka Cola Vending Machine is going to be a great upgrade to this deck as well. Whenever you sacrifice a food, create a tap treasure token. The flavor is awesome here. You drink a Coke, and you get some change back from the vending machine. Now, we're looking to discard cards, and we have to discard cards in order to cast Asmo. So, new ad, Brass's Tunnel Grinder. This card is just awesome. I keep finding myself putting it in more and more red decks, 
And the fact that we get to put the cards into our graveyard and not on the bottom of our library or anything is just where we want to be. We also get a new removal spell from Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Bitter Triumph says, as an additional cost, discard a card, then destroy target creature. I can do that. And then I'll cast Asmo. And then I'll go get the, food, the cookbook. That all seems really good. We get to play Rapacious Guest to make more food tokens. And we have Chainer Nightmare Adept to make, do more discarding. That seems really great as well. We need some payoffs for our food. We've got Witch's Oven, an Academy Manufacturer, making clues and foods and treasure tokens instead of just food tokens seems amazing. How about Containment Construct? When we discard a card, we exile it and then we may play it. So it's really like we get to keep the card. Experimental Confectioner is a great ad for this deck as well. So is Foreboding Fruit. We're definitely going to cast it with the adamant cost to make our food token. Hey, we got Gumdrop Poisoner as well. Great card to get some food and then take advantage of food. And we get this silly little guy, Old Flitterfang. And we get the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man as well. Scream Puff, what a great name. If we have a way to bring Voracious Felbeast back from the graveyard over and over, this seems like a great fit as well. Make three treasures every turn, or make three treasures a bunch of times. And then we can use those foods for whatever we need to do. So the board control is really strong in this deck. How you finish off the game, well, that's really up to you. I'd say reanimator package, like maybe put a Razaketh in the deck and try and bring that back. Or you could play Ad Nauseam, which is always a good fit. Or maybe you want to be a Bolus' Citadel deck. The choices are really endless on that end. But the important thing is there won't be any creatures to get in your way. So there's a Veto Feast, a food deck. Hope this helps. I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm surprised that this worked. Who knew that Mono Blue Infect could actually be a deck with some staying power and some uh, ways to put fear in your opponent's eyes? Admittedly, Tekuthal Inquiry Dominus coming out this year has made this a way more viable archetype. But we're here and we're going to do it. So we got to get a way to get poison counters onto our opponents. And obviously with blue creatures, we're not going to be able to do that a ton. So we need to make sure that we can find a Blighted Agent or find a way to get Prologue of Phyresis cast. Being in blue, we have Merchant Scroll and Mystical Tutor and Personal Tutor, a lot of different ways to go get this card. And we're in blue, so we'll be able to protect it and get everyone that counter. And once that happens, oh baby, here we go. Now, obviously there's some other creatures. We've got Viral Drake, we've got Plague Mirror. We can suit up one of our creatures with Grafted Exoskeleton, or we can play Corrupted Conscience and take someone's creature or just put it on our own creature, it doesn't matter. From there, we can play Helm of the Host and make copies of Tekathal. So now we'll get Proliferate, 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 Proliferate. That seems good. And in the upcoming uh, Fallout set, we get Rad Storm. So we'll be able to Storm, then Proliferate. That seems really good in this deck too. Obviously, we need other Proliferate things. Flux Channel are definitely fixed in the, fits in this deck. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Proliferate. And since we're Proliferating, we can play Archmage Ascension which is going to get us more tutoring for cards we need. Finally, since we're proliferating a bunch, I think it's fair to save ourselves a spot for the Millennium Calendar. It's not too often uh, actual loss of life is the alternate win con, but making your opponents each lose a thousand life seems really fun too. Hey, and don't forget our repeatable proliferate with Thrumming Bird. So a bit of a shorter deck tech, but definitely all the pieces there. It's mono blue, so you get tons of counter spells. You kind of police the table till it's time, you get everyone one counter, and then you start storming off or just proliferating the heck out of the table. Tekuthal will get you there, mono blue infect. Hope this helps. I'm surprised not more people are building this. The Cult of Scaro is the perfect artifact Grixis deck. Tremendous value in the command zone means we can build it however we want, and getting our 4-4 artifact creature out on the battlefield to attack seems like a great way to go. So what are we doing with this deck? We're playing Tezzerator, baby. Now, what does that entail? Well, Tezzeret as a planeswalker is all about artifacts, animating artifacts, finding artifacts, and getting value from artifacts. So we're building a big deck full of artifact creatures and artifacts, and of course, using Tezzeret to burn out the table. You'll notice this minus four here is to drain someone. We can also play Tezzeret Master of Metal. Tezzeret Master of the Bridge is a weird kind of ramp. Tezzeret the Schemer makes mana because it makes Ethereum cells, which are really just fancy treasure token. And probably the best Tezzeret, Tezzeret the Seeker. You get to untap artifacts, search for artifacts, and eventually turn your artifacts into creatures and get busy. 
So along with that, I think Roaming Throne is the perfect fit for this deck. Again, you're not playing a specific type of artifact creature, but you are going to name Dalek. So when, you're, or when your commander attacks, you're going to get double triggers. That seems like great extra value. And this thing is Ward 2. Did anyone mention that? This Roaming Throne has Ward 2. One-sided board wipes are great, so their name is Death is an awesome fit for this deck. And on the off chance that uh, you don't have any creatures that aren't artifacts in your deck, you can play Biotransference and make them all artifacts. Since we're playing Tezzerator, we might as well play Tezzeret's Gambit, along with Thoughtcast and Thought Monitor. These two cards are going to cost one mana, and they're going to draw you two. That's great. Hey, how about we add Aether Sworn Sphinx to the deck? A nine mana Cascade spell that we're going to pay two mana for. Sojourner's Companion is a zero mana 4-4, four, four. or if it's really early in the game, we can Artifact Land Cycle. That can get us Seed of the Synod if we want. We also have Artifact Dual Lands now, thanks to Modern Horizons 2. Let's support our Tezzerets with Icker Moon Gauntlet. And then jam a bunch of trinkets in the deck, like Icker Wellspring. We're going to have Kirk Clan Ironworks to sacrifice those things and make a bunch of mana. And maybe it's time you treat yourself to a Mishra's Workshop. Now, obviously this card is silly expensive, but hey, it taps for three mana for artifacts, and you're going to have a ton of those. Or maybe you go a little bit more budget with Metal Worker. Okay, maybe both these cards aren't necessarily uh, in everyone's price range, obviously, but they're still great. I think Cyberman Patrol is a great include. A flick two is just such an innocuous way to keep draining the table out. Your artifacts are going to be throwaways, so if they're attacking and people are blocking, they're still getting two damage through every time. That seems good. Hey, a little bit more ramp with an th enthusiastic mechanaut, and make your opponent's life miserable with Lodestone Golem. So there we go, Cult of Scarrow. Secretly, Cult of Tezzeret. All awesome, and... What a cool name for a deck, Tezzerator. Hope this helps.